you can put it on here too. Thank you. <laughs> um, hi, everybody. Uh, my name is Renee Spear, and this is my colleague, Julia Mihailov, and we are going to be talking to you about the Julia Language 1.0 Ephemeris and Physical Constants Reader for Solar System Bodies. And we, a little background on us, we just graduated from Embry-Riddle Aeronautical University with our bachelor's in aerospace engineering and are currently interns at JPL. Before we begin our presentation, we'd like to acknowledge our mentors, Dr. Kayla Martin and Dr. Damon Lando, as well as the NASA Jet Propulsion Laboratory, Arizona NASA Space Grant Consor Consortium, and Embry-Riddle's Undergraduate Research Institute for their help and support in this project. So a quick overview about our project. There are several functions um, for our ephemeris reader. The main one is called BODAT, which stands for body data. And the, the purpose of BODAT is to retrieve updated ephemeris information using publicly available JPL databases and directories. And for those of you who, are, who uh, don't know, an ephemeris reader is a file that stores information, usually regarding positions of celestial bodies, and then the user can pull the information as they need for their purpose. For our purpose, it's to simplify and aid in future space missions by creating this new tool um, for interplanetary mission design. Additionally, this, pro this project offers a faster convergence time and optimizes trajectory design as compared to our original code in MATLAB, um, which we will talk about in just a second. And the other purpose of this project is to, to improve the available J Julia language library within NASA. So the original author, Dr. Damon Lando, who works at JPL, he created this code originally in MATLAB. And part of our original job was to transform it from MATLAB into Julia to kind of use some of its characteristics and optimize the code as well as add additional capabilities. As far as the characteristic history goes, this ephemeris reader is one, is one of a kind currently as it includes major bodies, small bodies, and asteroids. Previous ephemeris readers, including DE and CGC ephemeris, only include major bodies or major bodies and the three largest asteroids. In order to use BODAT, you have to initialize two Julia packages, the JLD2 and FileIO packages, otherwise it will not run. Um, we were originally using the JLD and HDF5 packages, but when versions kept coming, when versions kept coming out, um, there are some bugs and some issues with it. So currently, we are using these. However, we're hoping to get back to the JLD and HDF5 packages. In order to use BODAT, BODAT, excuse me, you would run a line similar to the one on the screen, where the user provides parameters for what they, the information that they want to have retrieved, the bodies for which they want the parameters retrieved, a dictionary, which has greatly increased our efficiency. Uh, the first run of the code is very slow, but every run after that is much, much faster because we save any data that can be reused, such as the position, the velocity, whatever parameters you have called for later runs. And then other parameters include times and options. So just uh, to give you a quick overview, some of the parameters that you can call for a body include its number, its name, and its radius. You can see many more listed on the screen. However, the most important are the ephemeris parameters, and these include position, velocity, acceleration, and jerk vectors. And you can see a couple more listed on the screen also, but this is mainly what the code is used for. 
And now I'd like to pass it off to my colleague to give you a couple of examples about how this works. Uh, shown on the slide here um, is an example on uh, basically a brief overview of how WADA is used. Here we have X being the desired parameter of position and velocity vectors, Earth being the desired body, uh, DICT being the storage variable, and two separate numbers representing two different dates of May 31st and June 7th of 2017 in barycentric dynamical time, and this is with respect to J2000. This input would yield the following output. In this case, we have two separate columns representing the two times that were asked for. Here we have the first three rows being the x, y, z values of the position vectors at vector and the x, y, z value, values of the velocity vector. Uh, one recently implemented function is called AstroMod, which is short for Asteroid Modeling. Um, and it retrieves data from the database of asteroid models from inversion techniques, otherwise known as DAMIT, which has been a really fun acronym to use in professional settings. Um, <laughs> there are 35 param parameters available for extraction, and these are with regard to asteroid shape models. This is the brief uh, kind of input you would use when using AstroMod. Here we have Aster representing the desired asteroid call and Prop representing the desired property for that particular asteroid. A brief example of using AstroMod, here we are using the asteroid of Psyche and we're looking for lambda, which is the ecliptic longitude of the spina axis direction. In this case, we get two, uh, we get an output of two uh, entries in a dictionary. And just for background, um, each asteroid usually has more than one asteroid shape model. And in this way, we use Julia's capability of dictionaries to organize between the different models. Uh, in this case, we have the asteroid model ID as a key, the asteroid model IDs as keys, and then the lambda as values. And here we have 113 as the model ID, corresponding to a lambda of 32, and a model ID of 1806, corresponding to a lambda of 36. And I will hand it back to Renee to complete the presentation. The second most recently added capability is called GravMod, which is similar to AstroMod, except it stands for gravitational modeling. And this is a function that calculates the gravitational potential of a body on a spacecraft using a user-defined position for the spacecraft. Currently, there are only 65 bodies available for modeling, and this is just because the data that we need to create these models is not available for all the bodies. Um, GravMod itself has five sub-functions, um, which a couple I want to note here, just because we used one of Julie's packages, which made programming much easier. Um, these three functions are sphere mass mod, which creates the mass model for a spheroid, L mass mod, which creates the mass model for an ellipsoid, and then the Legendre function, which calculates Legendre polynomials. And we used the Julia SimPy package, which made all of programming the mathematics a lot simpler than what we had originally thought and what we had originally done. So to use GravMod, again, similar to AstroMod, you have a user input for a body that you want to have the gravitational potential calculated for um, with respect to a spacecraft. You also get define a spacecraft's position in kilometers with respect to the sun. And again, you have time in TDB, and this is used for orientation purposes to make sure everything is in the correct body frame. If you were to look at the spherical, um, the, uh, a model using GravMod for a spheroid such as Earth, you would see a run sh similar to the one shown on the screen if you were to use the same user-defined spacecraft position, and you would find that the output is 6.91 times 10 to the eighth kilojoules per kilogram, and that is the potential, the gravitational potential of the body on that spacecraft at that location. So a quick overview, um, just in terms of what, how much Julia helped us and what characteristics of Julia we really used that were very useful more than, more so than in Mat, than the original code in MATLAB. The Julia dictionary helped us a lot because it made the runs much faster, uh, the, su the successive runs, I should say, after the first run. Additionally, having different packages available um, was very useful to us, especially the benchmark tools package because we could really tell which functions and which parts of the code we needed to optimize. And then finally, using the type declarations also helped us increase our efficiency a lot from its original um, use in MATLAB. And that concludes our presentation. If you have nitty gritty questions about how exactly the methods that we use and the applied mathematics, we have a couple of papers you could check out. Otherwise, we'd like to open it up for questions. Thank you all for listening. Thank you. Um, are there questions? 
Uh, please. I noticed in the dictionary you were using that often the IDs were integers inside strings. Um, and similarly, the I guess the values tied to those keys looked like they could be integers, but they were strings. And I was wondering why you stored them as strings in the first place or if you knew why that was. I think actually in a more recent, um, towards the end of when, after we, uh, before we graduated, we actually changed it to put, put it back into integers. So oh, it was okay. way more useful than strings. Okay, cool. Yeah, I think we were more introduced when we did this. Um, now it's fixed, but yes, yeah. good, good catch. <laughs> Thank you. Just a real simple question. Uh, you had positional points X, Y, Z. Um, where's the zero points, zero, zero, zero point as um, a reference? So everything in default is taken with respect to the sun, but you can define two different bodies. So you can say if you want Saturn with respect to Jupiter, it just it's where you define it, but default it's the sun. Well, thank you. That concludes the session. Um, and Julia Khan. And Julia Khan. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, go home safely.